On a multi-speed bicycle such as this one hooked up to the indoor trainer here, both the position and the alignment of the rear derailleur as well as the front derailleurs there are critical for accurate shifting of the chain over the sprockets in the cassette set and the silent operation or silent run of the chain. Some people complain that the bike is noisy. It may be making crunchy noises somewhere across the pedal stroke range somewhere say crunch, crunch, crunch. It may be noisy all around. Noise, 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 noise. The bike may not shift accurately. It may shift when it shouldn't. It may not shift when it should. It may throw off the chain here behind the largest sprocket on the cassette set or right here between the frame and the smallest sprocket. Either which way, the rear derailleur is a precision mechanical device. Its setup is quite geometric but it's not rocket science. In this video I'll focus on one aspect of the adjustments, vertical alignment of the guide pulley and the tension pulley on it and the sprockets above. The three items, the three rotating items should be lined up vertically and it's really really easy to check with a piece of paper. The edge of a piece of paper that's assumed to be straight. The corner doesn't have to be square, you just need one straight edge. I'll show you. I'll show you also what's wrong with the existing setup. It's of course noisy in some positions. So come on in a little closer. I'll start spinning the crank and listen to where and how the bike is noisy. So so far so good, it's fairly quiet. Shift up, hey, it shifts. And the chain itself is running nicely and quietly. It shifts up, next gear. Okay, it shifts down quite accurately and responsively. Shifts down again. Shifts down again after a few mechanical clunks. Shifts down again, no problem. Shifts down again. And the last one is where the problems are. We are on the second smallest sprocket there. There. So we're going to go one more sprocket down. And that's where the problems will be audible. And I will get the camera close, it's going to be visible as well. So if I shift down one more, there. This is not normal. This is extra noise that shouldn't be there. If I shift up, now it's fine. Shift down. It doesn't shift over to the smallest sprocket and the cable tension here can be adjusted very simply with this barrel adjuster and with a little bit of tweaking the cable can be relaxed enough so the derailleur moves out sideways enough for the guide pulley there to guide the chain on the smallest sprocket. But If that alignment or that adjustment is done with the barrel adjuster here on the cable's tension, then the rest of the shifting is not going to work because the cable will be too loose. The reason why this happens is because the bike fell on its right side on the derailleur here. You can see evidence of this around there with some scratch marks and some scratch marks are here as well. It wasn't a massive wipeout. You can see scratch marks of course at the pedal because the pedal touched the pavement as well as the uh, corner of the derailleur here and here. So these scuff marks here are not normal wear and tear. They are a result of a fall and 
As a result, the derailleur hanger got bent. The derailleur mounts with this bolt here on this hanger. The derailleur hanger is bolted to the frame. I'll show you because I happen to have a replacement hanger right here. So, there. That's how this looks like. There. With the comes with the screws. These two extra pieces of uh, straight metal are these pieces for mounting a luggage rack. It just came with the package. I really don't have a story on that other than it cost me eleven dollars. Okay, twelve. There, twelve dollars for this derailleur hanger and for this cassette set that I have on the trainer that's the other item there that was 75 there so that's it so replacing this derailleur hanger which is bent as a result of the fall is not rocket science either but in a limited market with no available parts because this is a quite a unique shape proprietary to fit this frame it might be weeks away in some limited markets. So, your options include straightening it. A few degrees of bend can be straightened out of it if it's bent, I don't know, two degrees, three degrees, just a few degrees. Now before I do that, I want to show you where exactly the noise is coming from when the bicycle just doesn't want to shift and and it makes the extra noise so so far so good it's it's as quiet as it can be and if I shift down that's where the noise that's where the source source of the noise is coming from if I go slowly enough you can kind of see that the chain wants to jump on the smaller sprocket and it almost did it there. That's where the, the tips of the teeth on the smaller sprocket are hitting the side plate on the chain so that, it, that the chain slips back to the second sprocket where it is at the moment. I hope that makes sense. And it just, the derailleur just needs to be, and I'm gonna just move it out with my hand like so, it needs to be here in order for this shift to take place there. Okay, so I'm just doing it with my hand. So it could be, like I said, manipulated with cable tension but then then the rest of the shifts don't work because so much cable tension just uh, needs to be present for the shifts before I start bending it and go graphic on it I want to show you the vertical alignment or, or lack of so a straight line should be made from the center of the chain up here at the top of the sprocket to the center of the chain at the bottom of the sprocket and this straight line needs to be carried all the way down to all the way down to the tension pulley there the end of the tension pulley let me just move the camera here about so with a piece of paper you can check it if you line up the edge of the paper center line up top center line there and you can see that the derailleur needs to be there if it makes sense okay there so that's why the derailleur hanger is bent a little bit if I line up the edge of the paper with the derailleur you can see up top here that night doesn't line up here at the top of the sprocket it may line up at the bottom of the sprocket 
but that's not good enough. It needs to line up with the whole sprocket there. Okay, so a little bit of damping is uh, needs to is to take place and needs to happen. And for that, I need to shift the chain into a position where it's something like that, right? More out of the way for grabbing it with slip joint pliers or adjustable wrench, whatever you have. And I grab it here and just bend it like so, okay? It's gonna have a little bounce back, but it can be done carefully, a little bit at a time with reasonably small force applied but you do have to have a solid grip here at the bottom of the derailleur hanger right there bending it out now this can also be twisted side to side so just watch what you're doing so that's the vertical alignment of the the rear derailleur that is absolutely critical otherwise the bike is gonna continue making these noises where the tops of the teeth will hit the edge of the side plate because of this slight misalignment here okay it, it normally normally it flexes in like so and it should move parallel with the sprockets above but it has this little bit of extra bend to it that shouldn't be there. I hope that makes sense. That's one part of the geometry that the cable tension adjustment with this adjustment barrel will not resolve alone and actually before any other adjustments are done on it the derailleur hanger has to be straight and vertical alignment is necessary. So and that's my story about the geometry on this bicycle and even though this is a Shimano 105 the geometric principles apply across multiple makes and models of derailleurs how your make and model actually mounts where the adjustment barrel is on it and how the cable tension adjusts you're gonna have to look it up in your uh, manufacturer's technical specifications about your specific model of derailleur but the geometric principle of vertical alignment is universal throughout that's how that's necessary for the accurate shifting of the chain across the sprockets on the cassette set and the silent run of the chain I hope that makes sense and about five minutes or so later I'm done with the straightening of this derailleur hanger bracket by using nothing but the slip joint pliers that you saw two minutes or so ago. I want to point out that the serrated edge of the jaws on the slip joint pliers gouged out the head of the stainless steel bolt, about which I'm not concerned about at all. But if this cosmetic damage is a concern to you, very simply, instead of the slip joint pliers with a serrated jaw, just use a crescent wrench also known as adjustable wrench also known as adjustable spanner that has smooth jaws and this is not an issue in that case and you can apply still enough leverage with it to straighten that derailleur hanger bracket i want to mention that third party proprietary tools also exist that can straighten this derailleur by made by known and recognized brands they typically work by removing this bolt that mounts the derailleur to the hanger bracket and into the threaded hole on the derailleur hanger bracket the tool mounts with a bolt so the derailleur is just off the cable can still be connected but it's out of the way mount the tool into the same threaded hole and by applying force and leverage the derailleur hanger can be straightened in multiple positions but if you like saving money a crescent wrench adjustable spanner whatever same tool works just as well i also adjusted the cable tension and 
a limit screw here with this small allen key or hex key to ensure that the bicycle actually shifts through all of the gears in its entire range accurately. The limit screws may not adjust with the same tool that I have here on your particular make and model of derailleur, but it's a geometric necessity to have upper and lower limit screws somewhere on your derailleur because the derailleur because the derailleur's limit screws limit the motion of the derailleur sideways so the chain is shifted onto the smallest sprocket there but isn't thrown off here into the space between the frame and the last smallest sprocket there. The upper limit screw here does the same at the other end here. The derailleur should shift the chain onto the largest sprocket without throwing the chain off into the space behind it. So that's where the limit screw comes in to limit the motion of the derailleur at this extreme here. So upper and lower limit screws will be somewhere on your derailleur on any multi-speed bicycle with a derailleur. Let's have a look at straightness with the same piece of paper and see how good this straightening turned out to be. I'm lining up the edge of the paper with the center line of the chain at the top of the sprocket and at this point the edge of the paper should go through the center line of the chain at the bottom of the sprocket as well and if the straightening is done right the edge of the paper should go through the center line of the chain as the chain wraps the bottom of the tension pulley. How about that? Pretty close to perfect, yes? Okay, if it looks good, it should also work. Let's have a look at it and test it. So this is static. Let's test it dynamically with the chain in motion. The chain should run silently in all of the gears and the bicycle should shift into all of the gears. So, let's see, one click on the shifter at the handlebar corresponds to one motion of the derailleur and the chain is running through silently as it should. Let's go up one more gear, same responsiveness. One click on the shifter, one motion on the derailleur, a little bit of mechanical noise during shifting, and then the chain runs silently. That's nice. All the gears are available. The derailleur shifts responsively and instantly. There, throughout the entire range, no issues. Let's go down multiple gears. No problems there. And let's see if the chain makes it to the smallest sprocket without making any noise. Flawless. Let's shift up. Let's shift down. Oh yeah. No noise whatsoever, besides the shifting noise, the chain is making no additional clackety noise or crunchy noise, there it shifts into all gears without hesitation and without making noise. So I say this has been straightened well enough to work close enough to perfectly.